My brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you about something that's very near and dear to me, is understanding the true function of the liver. The primary function of the liver is to make fat, and it makes it out of amino acids and sugars that come from both plants and animals. When we eat food, whether it's from a plant or an animal, it breaks down to three macronutrients, amino acids, simple sugars, and fatty acids. Interesting enough, the fat goes to the lymphatics, circulated everywhere through the chylomicrons that build up or, or, or develop in the gut in order to bring them into the lymphatics and send them to every cell of your body. Where amino acids and sugars go to the hepatic portal system, where via insulin they're converted to fat. Now, if you develop cirrhosis, the liver significantly is impacted by sugar metabolism. It's significantly decreased, which can lead to what we call insulin resistance and impaired glucose tolerance. What this means is that cirrhosis has, has difficulty regulating blood sugar due to the liver's inability to properly process the glucose. This can manifest as symptoms ranging from mild glucose intolerance to full-blown, guess what, you know it, diabetes sometimes referred to as hepatogenous diabetes, which I know you probably haven't heard of this before. So what are some key components about cirrhosis and sugar metabolism? Well, one is insulin resistance. So the primary issues in cirrhosis is insulin resistance, where what's really happening, the cells that normally are affected by insulin, which the cells in the liver, I bet, are the only primary cells of the body that respond to insulin and convert the amino acids and sugars to fat. So if the liver is mostly damaged, significantly causing cirrhosis, you're obviously going to build up glucose levels are going to rise. Amino acids levels are going to rise. You get something called hepatic encephalopathy. So it's really kind of an interesting concept. You see people, they're cachectic, they're skinny. They have very skinny arms and legs. They have a big belly, which is secondary to ascites because the hepatic portal blood system is blocking the fluid's ability to come back to the liver. And so they build up ascites in the belly. All the fluid just drains out uh, of the of the uh, of the blood system right into the abdominal cavity, causing ascites. They look fat, but it's not. They're skinny inside, right? So uh, the liver function impairment, as the liver becomes scarred in cirrhosis, its ability to store and release glucose is further damaged. But I think it really is that the liver's ability to store to manufacture and store fat is damaged. Glucose is not your problem. We don't have a problem with hypoglycemia. It's a problem with hyperglycemia. So insulin is increased. The pancreas puts more insulin out to combat the rising sugars, but the liver is not functioning anymore. It's called hepatogenous diabetes. Glucose intolerance, right? hepatogenous diabetes in advanced stages. Well, they call it damaged liver cells in, this, in cirrhosis may not effectively absorb glucose from the bloodstream. Duh, the liver's job is to convert amino acids and sugars via insulin to fat or you die. Maybe that's the simple function of the liver, but we've been told it's to, it's to uh, metabolize all the alcohol and the drugs we've been given like is that the science is telling us something as simple as like alcohol and and drugs that's why it's there bet not bet not the liver also can disrupt the balance in hormones which again male and female hormones are significantly damaged because of the liver a uh, close monitoring of glucose levels may be essential but what if you just didn't eat the plants and the protein, but you focused on eating fat, suddenly your liver will have time to, to regenerate and your body will be healed and healthier than ever before. Kind of simple, isn't it? So look up hepatogenous diabetes and cirrhosis 
and realize that the majority of those patients have elevated glucose and, and, and insulin, right? Check it out. See what you think.